Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to support the member from Davenport's motion 126. It seeks to declare June 10th each year as Portugal Day and the entire month of June as Portuguese Heritage Month. This, I believe, would pay tribute to the important contributions that Canadians of Portuguese descent have played in building the Canada that we know today. In my riding of Saskatoon Grasswood, there's approximately 815 citizens of Portuguese descent. So granted, it's not a huge population. We're speaking only of 815. But you know what? They are vibrant, close-knit community and very strong ties to their heritage. Now, according to the Canadian Encyclopedia, Portuguese explorers were among the first Europeans to see Canadian soil way back in 1852. Subsequently, Portuguese fishermen fished for cod on the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. But the big wave of immigration to Canada actually began in the 1950s, mostly to work on farms and on the railway, CNR back then. And I'm going to quote a number of people from my city of Saskatoon. I know there's different pockets around this country of Portuguese, and we welcome them all to this country. So one such man from my city of Saskatoon was Mr. Manuel Nevish, who wrote the first Portuguese immigrants to Saskatoon actually came in the year of 1957. They came from Azores and from mainland Portugal to work on the railway, CNR, back then. It was a terrible situation at first. Let's face it, they come from Portugal over to Canada. They were homesick. They missed their families. The difficulty that they had back then with the language and the different customs and the isolation caused many of them actually to get up and go back home. According to uh, Manuel, uh, you know, he still remembers the hardship and the bitter tears, but will succeed to great. You know, he went on to say, I had left my wife back home along with my two daughters in Portugal. That first winter, can you imagine that? It must have been miserable. The temperatures in Saskatchewan, usually in the winter, minus 30s and 40s. And he was working in those temperatures, Madam Speaker, and he said they were unbearable. None of us had imagined those temperatures, and really, we felt demoralized. However, back in 1959, more families decided to arrive from Azores, and according to Manuel, the first roots of the Portuguese community were started and getting strong. In fact, by the late 60s, there were about 45 Portuguese families in my city of Saskatoon. The Portuguese community continued to grow in my city, and in 1988, the Saskatoon Portuguese Canadian Association was formed. The association generated a lot of interest, in fact, resulted in social events and celebrations. One of the goals of the association was to plan the annual religious event, Our Lady of Fatima Celebration. But sadly, Madam Speaker, Mr. Manuel Nevish passed away a few years ago. However, he did leave us with this interesting history of those precious Portuguese immigrants who came to my city of Saskatoon. We certainly thank him for his contribution, and tonight I certainly salute him and all the Portuguese in my city of Saskatoon. I also heard from two sisters, Maria Zelishak and Edwina uh, Sabata, who arrived in Saskatoon when they were very young. They were only 12 and 9 uh, at that age, and they arrived in Saskatoon with their parents, Jose and Maria Silvina, Silveda, and their brothers, Jose Carlos. It started their life, actually, they were living in their uncle's basement when they came. So imagine that. They're only 9 and 12 years old. Maria writes, at school, we were forced out during recess, but actually they just stood by the building because they didn't know anyone and, of course, they couldn't speak English. We wanted to stay inside school, but the teachers wouldn't allow that. We arrived toward the end of September. And you know what happens in September. School starts right away. Next, winter arrived. Well, we, they had never seen snow in their life or experienced this kind of cold, 
So it was very hard to adapt, especially when they didn't have a vehicle. We walked or took the bus. In fact, they are quoted as saying they remember when they rode the bus because they never made eye contact. Why, you say? Well, she says, I just looked down. I was afraid someone would start talking to me, and I couldn't understand, and I would have to answer. She goes on to write, it was in grade 12 that I learned proper English. My teacher was a nun. I don't remember her name, but it was due to her professional dedication as a teacher that I learned the language properly and was able to become an English teacher myself. Maria teaches English as an additional language. So what a wonderful story that we hear a teacher giving the student and now the student becoming a teacher. Another member of my Saskatoon Portuguese community, Tony Barrows, shares his family story on the immigration to this country of Canada. My parents, Josie and Inez Barrows, came to settle in Saskatoon in the fall of 1970. They wanted to make a better life for themselves and their future children. They came with only two suitcases. That was quite common back then. It was my mother's sister and husband, uh, Josie and Amelia Cabril, who sponsored my parents and helped them get on their feet. They came filled with hope for a new life in a new world, filled with opportunities, Madam Speaker. They came from a small island called Santa Maria in the Azores Island, belonging, of course, to Portugal. They brought very little with them, but they did bring, and most of them do, willingness to work hard, a strong, strong sense of family, and certainly of faith in God. My father, Jose, found work as a laborer with a construction company, and my mother as a seamstress in the city of Saskatoon. Shortly after their arrival, they started their family, and they raised three magnificent children, Antonio, Dina, and Nelia. They worked hard to build a life in their new country. They would often work two jobs, and we see this even today to provide for their family and their continued success. Jose developed his skills in the construction industry and soon became a skilled mason and foreman for jobs that he would take on in the city of Saskatoon. You know, family was, and I agree that it certainly is today, an extremely port, uh, an important part of the Portuguese life. The Portuguese work ethic is simply outstanding. The Portuguese family story is no different than many other immigrants who have adopted Canada as their new home. We are so proud of being Canadian. We are also so proud of being Portuguese. Manuel Nash, Mrs. Zelishak's family, and Tony Barris's family came to Canada hoping for a better life. They went through many hardships, like I've just talked about, but they persevered and have contributed greatly to my city of Saskatoon and to their own Portuguese community, like many other Portuguese from coast to coast to coast in this country. Madam Speaker, at least two past members of Parliament, Dr. Keith Martin, Squimo, Juan de Fuca, BC, and Mario Silva from Davenport, Ontario, were of Portuguese descent. Popular singers in this country, of course, Nelly Furtado and Sean Mendes, are of Portuguese descent. But yes, if I look at the hockey players currently playing professional in the National Hockey League, we can't forget about John Tavares of the New York Islanders or the talented defenseman from the Los Angeles Kings, Drew Doughty, just to name a few. They are of Portuguese descent. So here we have a small representation of their contributions to entertainment, their contributions to politics, and certainly their contributions to sport. They even have their own Walk of Fame in downtown Toronto. In, close, in closing, Madam Speaker, let me say the Portuguese are very proud of their culture. They have a strong work ethic, and their family and their faith are the cornerstones of the Portuguese culture. They love to sing and dance when they get together for their religious festivals. It is my belief that we should have a Portugal Day and a Portuguese Heritage Month to celebrate 
these and the many other contributions that they have to make Canada a better place for all. I hope my colleagues will support this motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker.